was the most influential learning point for developing Psyche in that respect? I'd have to say it was the study of Huna, which is the ancient Hawaiian uh, philosophy. It's not really a religion, but it is a philosophy of life. And I think that probably influenced me more than anything else because I think it comes closest to matching what goes on in Psyche. Uh, when I first receive these downloads or transmissions or whatever you'd like to call them, the whole patterns put into my head that became the work called Psyche, I often wondered, well, where did this come from and, and what is, does it relate to anything that we know about right now or is it something brand new? And over time, I was led to becoming very curious about this uh, whole system of thinking and healing system called HUNA. So as I explored HUNA more and more, I got more and more involved. Eventually, I wanted to do something experiential. I'd read virtually every book that was published on the subject and was deeply fascinated by its core philosophy because it included what the Hawaiians called the lower self, the middle self, and the high self, which interestingly enough corresponds pretty well to subconscious, conscious, and superconscious. And so as I saw the philosophy, it wasn't riddled with dogma and particularly rigid philosophical or religious beliefs. It had a lot of latitude and it had a lot of what I would consider core truths or universal truths that you can find in most of the major religions in one way or another. So I got really interested to the point where I wanted to take some experiential training and I got an opportunity to do that in uh, 1990 on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. Uh, the, uh, the course was uh, taught by Serge Kahili King who was uh, author of several books about Huna and also an American psychologist but had been raised in the Huna tradition since he was about 13 years old. And so he had a magnificent way of translating the ancient Hawaiian ideas into contemporary Western thinking so it could be more easily assimilated by those of us that wouldn't, weren't born and grew up in Hawaii. At any rate, in this process of taking this training, uh, I, I really got the deeper experience and understanding of what Huna was. And in that training, being 1990, they were taking a, consens or taking a census uh, in, uh, in, in the United States, essentially counting noses how many people uh, live in the, in the United States or its uh, uh, connected um, places like Hawaii. And so uh, Serge told us one day that he had just found out that on the island of Kauai alone, that when one of the questions in the census uh, questionnaire that you ask is, what's your country of origin? And interestingly enough, 60 people on the island of Hawaiian descent said Mu, M-U is the way it's spelled. The, the um, English version of that is we call it Lemuria. But that was my first introduction to the notion of the idea of Lemuria and what was it. So I started exploring that and I found in the Edgar Cayce readings as an example references to Lemuria as uh, this massive continent. We might call it Pangaea. It's called that uh, by some of the geologists who understand that that continent was a part of our reality many thousands of years ago. And I, I was so fascinated by that, studied the culture of it, and I realized, uh, again, through this intuitive process that brought the information to me, that I've come to believe that Psyche is really a very ancient form of philosophy and healing arts and so on that was core and foundational to this continent of Lemuria, that the priests uh, and the spiritual uh, uh, folks there believed in these basic principles. The law of one is, is you can you say it that way from a spiritual point of view, called the law of one. If you m race in time to right now in our current reality and science, it would be called quantum entanglement. It would be called from Einstein, uh, this whole idea of the illusion of separation, that we're not really separate. So quantum entanglement says everything is entangled. Everything is a part of everything else. If you look at the Native American traditions, uh, they see pretty much the same thing. They will say, before their ceremonies began, in the Lakota tradition at least, they will say, which means all my relations. It means everything is related and I'm related to everything else. And many of the indigenous cultures around the world have something similar that's an acknowledgement of that. In Hawaiian, interestingly enough, the greeting that is most common in Hawaii is aloha. So most uh, tourists who go there think aloha just means hello. 
like we would say hi in the United States. But it means a lot more than that. When you break down the language bits, the pieces of that word, uh, aloha, ha means breath and alo means divine. So when you say aloha at the deeper meaning of the ancient Huna tradition and I believe Lemurian tradition, aloha means I see the divine breath in you. Not terribly different from the Hindu tradition of namaste, I see the divineness in you. Or the, uh, the phrase in la kesh coming from the Mayan tradition, which means hello, I am another you. These are beautiful, beautiful sayings that capture this ancient wisdom that we're all one. And I believe that um, the most probable origin of Psyche was uh, in the Lemurian culture. In discovering more and more about Lemuria, I was, of course, introduced to uh, a much more well-known concept of an ancient civilization uh, known as Atlantis. Most people have heard of Atlantis, not so many have heard of Lemuria. But the interesting part about the two cultures was that they were one culture at one time. At, at, at along the, uh, the way, at some point, there was a split. Atlantis decided that the world was just about material stuff. And so they started creating a culture around amassing material power and material structures and material everything. So in a way, you can think of it from a Psyche point of view, they became increasingly more left brain, more disconnected from the right hemisphere, the feminine, emotional, uh, spiritual hemisphere, until the two cultures had quite the, quite the difference between them and their cultures uh, displayed these differences in a very powerful way. It's said that Atlantis destroyed itself because it's misuse and abuse of technology. And if you look at our culture today in North America, uh, there's hardly any difference between what the, this culture, this Atlantean culture uh, was up to in the misuse and abuse of technology and what our culture's uh, doing. We've, we've engineered uh, our food to be actually dangerous to eat. We've engineered uh, mechanical devices that harm our soil, that harm our air, that harm us as human beings. We've created a pharmaceutical industry with, with toxic chemicals we're putting in our body, all in the name of health. I mean, we have created a very left brain, very disconnected type of society. Whereas Lemurian society, the right hemisphere idea, was very technologically advanced as well. But they used the technology for spiritual evolution, uh, evolutionary purposes. In other words, they used it as part of their spiritual practice. Instead of using it in the ways that acknowledge separation, it acknowledges wholeness. And I think that in a metaphorical way at the very least, what's going on today with what most people would say is a shift going on in consciousness is just that. It's the shift of the recognition of the left hemisphere of the brain and the right, technology and spirit, science and spirit, if you will, and they're coming back together. It's just like the eagle and the condor prophecy I spoke about earlier, that these two uh, metaphorical birds, I mean, they're real birds, but the whole idea that of what they represent coming back into harmony with each other is what science and spirit need to do today. And I believe that Psyche, representing the Lemurian philosophy, concept, and spiritual orientation, is part of that coming home, coming back into wholeness operation, teaching us the technology of this ancient civilization to reintegrate the left and the right hemispheres of our own brains, science and spirit coming home in here.